Well, hello, everybody. I'm Beaver Randolph. And I'm Ron Bearden. Um, today, uh, we uh, took a little bit of a break. Uh, we had some issues with <laughs> our uh, uploading to our uh, uh, service provider, whatever you yeah. want to call it, uh, Podbean. Um, and what we're doing today is uh, this is going to be the first episode of our new platform which is youtube right all of the all 11 of our episodes have been uploaded and this will be a new one so we'll have uh this will be part uh, part two of our nehemiah study of the book of nehemiah and we are on youtube now so if you subscribe and hit the bell, it will let you know when a new episode uploads. So we're excited about it. It's like, and another thing, we need to uh, apologize for our audio issues in previous tapings, but we're getting better. So yes, <laughs> we're yeah, we're, we're, I'm. Uh, audio issues are, are a thing. I think it just the uh, devil's been really messing with us on everything. It's been yes. a, kind of an uphill battle, but. Yeah, now that we're we're talking about spiritual warfare and the walls being attacked and the people, I mean, it's like okay, firsthand we're yeah, yeah. seeing a little, you know, feeling a little bit of a t- attacked over here. But, chaos, but that's a good thing because yeah. it means you're doing something right. Absolutely. So, but um, uh, but yeah, that's all we wanted to say. Just at the first, and on with Nehemiah. Yes, so oh. today will be part two. We already did part one, which was chapter one and two. And just as a, a brief recap of, of that right there, I think the big issues in chapter one and two is, do you believe that it is God's will to restore your family? You know what I mean? Is that God's will? And you And you have to believe that. And I believe that that Nehemiah, the book and, and picture, is a powerful message about how much a person can accomplish when you align yourself with the the will and the plan of God like Nehemiah did. Yes. Because if you think about it, initially, he, he had a crisis of faith from when he heard uh, the condition of the Jews in Jerusalem and when he actually had to be straight up with the king and say, okay, I'm going to tell him what it is. Yeah. That was a step of faith so he believed this is god's will and i'm just and he stepped out and look bam everything he needed with for the restoration of the walls yeah god provided it was literally in the face of death because you didn't really talk to the king about anything until you i mean anything (laughs) yeah your whole purpose was to give him a a cup yeah something to drink and that's it man you know yeah you're don't not, don't talk don't yeah. sing don't dance don't do nothing just give just, me the cup yeah just take you <laughs> make quick, sure it's full <laughs> take a quick uh swig to make sure it's not poisoned and then you're yeah. good to go yeah so well before we begin um i'd like to open in a word of prayer so lord god we come before you today lord we thank you for this day and this opportunity lord we just ask that your holy spirit would guide us today and that we would be encouraged and our listeners be encouraged and edified, Lord. That Those are our motives, and we uh, invite your presence here with us, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to move on now. We're going to go from uh, to chapter 3. And chapter 3, I'm not going to read anything out of chapter 3. And if, you, if somebody wants to read chapter 3, they're more than welcome. But the whole... Chapter 3 is the different families and how they were um, set to do the work. You know, each had their own section, you know, by by family. In front of their own home. Yeah, the valley gate they built. So it's talking about all of that, the different families. And and so I want to get to chapter 4, and we're going to read uh, chapter 4. And notice that work has begun. People are working. They've come together. They're in one mind so far. And so they're starting to get something done. And as soon as they start getting something done, guess who shows up? Verse 4, chapter 1. But it so happened when Sanballat heard 
that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And something that we uh, have to uh, let everybody know or, or make sure that is understood that, that not only the Jews were under enslavement to uh, the king of Persia, or, uh, or, but also all these other nations. Yeah. So here they see the king giving favor to the Jews, and that just enraged them even more. And they're like, well, who are you? And that you get this, you know. So, I mean, they seethed. They hated them. They wanted to kill them, destroy them. But remember, uh, in in chapter 6 of Ephesians, we, we, we pretty much laid out who's behind and what's behind these, these attacks. It's the yeah. enemy. And it also said in Ephesians 6 that, that let's see, it said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So these are the wiles or the strategies that the devil is shooting at the Jews to try to stop the work. At all costs, they wanted to stop the work of restoration. So. Yes. Verse 2, and he spoke before his brethren, the army of Samaria, and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish, stones that are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, Whatever they build, even if, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. So uh, they were being mocked, they were despised, and if you stop and think about that, it's not easy to, be, to sit there and take stuff like that and to be despised. That's, who yeah. wants to be despised? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not an easy experience for all this to go, to go on. So how does Nehemiah respond to this? Well, verse 4, it says, Hear, O God, O our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to a land of captivity. So, verse 5, Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sin be blotted out from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So this was going on every time there was some progress, Sambalat, Tobiah, Gershom, they show up. Verse 6, so we built the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. For the people had a mind to work. Here, come, here he comes again. Now it happened. When Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and that the gaps were beginning to be closed, that they became very angry. And all of them conspired together to come and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. So that's another tactic of the enemy. When there's something, a work of God going on, what are they going to do? They're going to shoot at it with confusion, mocking, uh, anything, whatever, anything to get the work to stop. Yes. And, and, I, and I think it's really cool that, that Nehemiah, every time... Uh, he's faced with search, uh, situations and circumstances that he takes he takes it to the Lord. So instead of uh, reacting or, or, or however, he he is showing that he's going to God for his for his help, and he's not conferring, you know, with with flesh and blood and women and men, you know. Yeah. He, he's he's going to God. He's asking for God's help and direction. So uh, verse. Nine. Nevertheless, this is just after the, the Am, Sambalat and them all uh, got mad at him, and now they're trying to create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to our God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. So now things have gotten to the level of of spiritual warfare to try to get this and. and yeah, it's spiritual, but but it's Sambalat, Tobiah. I mean, it's these guys in their nations. I mean, they're right there. They're people standing in your face. You can see them. Yeah. You know, and so they're trying to stop the work. So now what they have to do is they have to set up a watch day and night because the, uh, well, it's just, it's, it's came to that point. They're, they're not, they, now they fear for, for their safety. 
Yeah. You know, so that's another uh, hard thing, you know, and it seems like uh, Nehemiah and the people get shot at a lot with fear, a whole lot. You yeah. know, fear seems to be a big, big way. And there's different ways you can plug that fear in there. Mm -hmm. But fear seems to be a very effective way to shut something down. Yes. And this this is a miracle act of God. And when I'm talking about restoration and the way I see it, you know, I see like the walls being salvation, the walls of salvation mm -hmm. and restoration being one person restored to God, our father, through his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. That's the ultimate restoration through Jesus to be restored into a right relationship with God. So if they were having that much trouble and that much uh, warfare was coming against them to stop that work, well, how much warfare would come against one individual in one family who just simply believed that God would restore uh, their family and heal the relationship? So, I yeah. mean, I kind of see it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I kind of yeah. wow, I kind of see it from this, how it speaks to me, you know, from my own experience. So in verse 10, and I think I said previously in the first episode that they called them the Israelites. What was going on here is this is Judah, Judah, the tribe of Judah. They're in Jerusalem. Then you've got the northern kingdom, which is Israel, which is in Samaria. And they're like the compromised Jews. I mean, the they don't even worship like they were supposed to, like God commanded them in the temple and the sacrifices. They just do it their own way. Yeah. So they're the compromised Jews, okay? And then these these Jews, these the tribe of Judah, this is a whole different thing. And if if you know the history, you can see back and forth how, you know, mm -hmm. how all that went. But um verse 10. Then Judah said, The strength of the laborers is failing. And there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. Hmm. Okay, so now is Nehemiah not only dealing with the attacks and the stuff coming from the outside, but now he's got to start uh, dealing with, with issues on the inside of the people that are a part of this work. And so... Right here, it says, uh, uh, okay, we're getting weak. Our laborers are failing, and there's so much rubbish that we're not able to build the wall. Okay, well, think about this. They got everybody together, right? Everybody had their responsibility. So if the rubbish is not being picked up, somebody ain't doing their job, right? Yeah. And so that's slowing down the word cause you, work because you've got somebody. They're not all the way committed. Yeah, you know, you 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 might want to put that individual on the top of the wall up there with the mm -hmm. sword and see how much, yeah. how you know how committed they get. You know, let them work up way up there one day and look out and see all the enemies and yeah. And, yeah. and you know have a heart check and get yeah. get right. But this was a complacency issue. This was uh, somebody not pulling their weight, man, within within the work. And looks to me like he uh, he dealt dealt with it. And our adversary said, verse 11, they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. Man, I mean, they're shooting at Nehemiah and these people every, uh, every which way. So I'm sure that the word got out that, hey, uh, uh, spread you know spreading rumors and and disinformation or fake news or whatever hey you know they're gonna attack tomorrow so yeah. you better not show up you know you're, you're gonna get you're gonna get whacked yeah you know so i mean there was a lot lot going on uh, against this in verse 12 so it was when the jews who dwelt near them that's the samaritans came that they told us ten times from whatever place you turn they will be upon us. So it sounds to me like the uh, brethren, you know, the <laughs> compromised brethren. How are you going to know that they're compromised? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That they're coming to them and, and they're also trying to instill fear in them as well. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, their own. Now, they weren't cool with them. You know, I don't know if they were. You know what I mean? Like in Jesus' days, a Samaritan was like, oh my gosh, you don't touch him. You don't, you know, get yeah. near him or nothing like that. So 
there was some animosity between between them. So these people uh, told him 10 times. Wow. I mean, it's not like they said it 10 times in a row. It's like 10 times they shot at him with this same lie. Yeah. Because this is what it is. What it is it's a lie. Yeah. To get him to stop the word. So, verse 13. Therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. That's leadership. That's Nehemiah in, in the midst of all this chaos and all these different things going on. That's leadership to know that he needed to set up protection for these families why they, why they worked and organize it. And I think the cool thing about Nehemiah is Nehemiah is not like a son of a king or a, a noble or whatever. Nehemiah is just a, a layman, regular dude. You know, he's not he, he's not some uh, noble or ruler or anything like that. So now it's they, they've got to the point to where he's having to position men behind them to watch their backs and at the openings in order to protect the people. So he positions these families. Verse 14, and I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Here we go again with another wonderful sign of leadership is that he laid it out right there everything look this is what we're doing and this is what it's about it's about our families uh our, our children so don't be afraid this great and awesome uh work and fight for your brethren and they did you know i mean they were there willing to, i mean they didn't have to but they they were all willing and, and they were of one mind yeah can you imagine getting that peop that many people in to come into agreement but yeah that 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 whole deal right there was was a perfect response from Nehemiah as a leader, uh, reminding the people to not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord that's who started this, who is great and awesome. So verse 15, And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that time on, that half of my servants worked at construction while the other half held spears, the shields, bows, wore armor, and the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked with construction and with the other held a weapon. Wow, so that sounds to me like he got really, really organized really fast uh encouraged the people had a plan uh and uh i mean they armed themselves to protect themselves why so the work wouldn't be stopped yeah so uh verse 18 every one of the builders had his sword girded at his side as he built and the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me then i said to the nobles the rulers and the rest of the people the work is great and extensive and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us there, our God will fight for us. I'll say that again. Our God will fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of the men held the spears from daybreak until the stars appeared. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servant stay at night in Jerusalem, that they may be our guard by night and a working party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes, except that everyone took them off for washing. So they were definitely committed to this work. And, and just in that chapter, we see a lot of, a lot of things, the strategies that, that, the enemy through at Nehemiah and, and the people, and we see how Nehemiah responded. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I see similarities between Nehemiah and Jesus. You know what I mean? I mean, the, the way Jesus did things different, how he encouraged. And I'm not saying Nehemiah is a, 
I'm not saying that, but I do see similarities in the character. And there should be, yeah. you know, in Nehemiah and Jesus. Yeah, so, sure. So they were attacked by fear. They were attacked by physical threats. They were attacked by discouragement. They were attacked by false brothers. That's just like four or five attacks in one chapter. Yeah. And, and how many times do we get attacked in, in initially believing that, that, hey, restoration is God's will? Yeah. You know, in our family or in our relationships. And, and then when the work of restoration begins, I mean, it's, it, there's going to be all out war to try to stop that. Mm hmm. So that's just kind of how I see that and how it encourages me. And then I've got, uh, you know, the, the, the testimony in my own heart of what I've seen God do in my life and in my family over the scene. I gave my heart to the Lord June 26, 1997, and here it is all these years later. And relationships have been restored. Most importantly, relationships of my family members to Lord and, you know, to God Mm -hmm. and healing in our family. But, but at every step of the way, there's, there's always been, uh, attacks from the enemy. So, yeah. So here we are. That's what's going on in, in chapters three and four, uh, part two of Nehemiah restoring the, restoring the walls. I think what I take from this is a, uh, sense that, not a sense, but, Always go back to God in prayer, you know. Yeah. When somebody is, you know, despising you, when somebody is is coming against that, and people maybe just a a you know the, the spiritual warfare that goes on, you know, always instead of just breaking down and crying and going, you know, oh no, Lord, this is you know this is terrible, this is all this, you know, okay, God, here's here's my problem. You know, mm -hmm. come come from that perspective. Fred is, it's like, look, here's, you know, he, he went to God with, with his, you know, every issue that yes that came his way. Yes. Okay, God, here, what do we do about this? You know, here's, you know, here's what I think you've told me to do. You want me to rebuild this wall, you know, and that's, you know, like you were saying, it applies to our family as restoration. Yeah. You know. But you got to keep coming back to God whenever you keep getting hit, you know. And yes, otherwise you fall or you quit, you know, or you get discouraged. Cause we're or, gonna fail anyway at any time. So yeah, so that was that. That's uh, I think it's I think it's really cool. I I like to read stuff in the Bible where I can take something out of it, like for today or like for what's going mm -hmm. on in my life or whatever. And being able to, to see the, the strategies that the enemy uses mm -hmm. against us and how Nehemiah responds to him. I mean, I really, really respect this guy's character and the American church and American families could use some Nehemiah's and, yes. and Esther's and you know, you know yes. what I mean? to be raised up in their, in their families, you know? Yeah. Cause I believe that's God's heart is restoration, restoration us to the father through, through what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us and completed and also restoration with relationships and how that looks. I mean, it's not a, uh, what do you call that? A Hallmark channel movie yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> Again, you know, I want to reiterate that. Yeah, each and, day has its own rating, I think. <laughs> yeah, and and not every relationship, you know. I mean, people have a choice. Yeah, you know, there there are we we may want that restoration, but it's that individual's, you know, our our place is to ask for forgiveness or whatever. But it's yes. there, that's on them. So I've also seen some relationships that, you know, that just didn't go down. Yeah, like I yeah. like I kind of expected, but that th you know that's that's only like one 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 deal you know but the rest i mean it was just beautiful mm -hmm. you know but it has come through many many uh many battles and, and i think the biggest battle is just the battle of belief yeah that god wants to do this for us yes and and it's going to get hard and we're going to fall and we're not going to believe and this and that but i believe the grace of god is sufficient to get us through this because this is his purpose yes and when we believe this, it's like 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 Nehemiah hitting that sweet spot where God's will 
and your obedience, you know, and, and, and belief. I mean, it's right there and in God's plan. And I mean, this is all it's it's this is God's will. Yeah. yeah. So there is going to be, uh, as they say in that movie, there will be blood. Well, yeah. There will be there will be attacks. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's all we have for for this one. And just want to, again, let everybody know we sure appreciate you listening. And we just hope everybody's encouraged. Uh, Beaver will fill you in with whatever other details we have. <laughs> well, um, basically, all I'm just going to say is, you know, uh, you know, subscribe and hit the notification bell, like Ron said before, because uh, we're on YouTube now. And, yeah. Um, uh, if you want to be notified of, of uh, future videos and, well, audio, but it's right. video, it's a video platform. We, we, we say audio. It's a podcast on, on video. But um, so, and that's basically it. So right. I will uh, stop right there and we will uh, hit you with the next podcast very soon. That's right. God bless everybody and we love you.